This video is for informational purposes only and does not constitute legal advice. If you have further questions, please contact an attorney and we'll discuss some resources at the end of this video. Hi, my name is Stephen Gilmore. I'm a criminal defense attorney in San Antonio, Texas. And I'm Rachel Castagnoli, an attorney from Austin, Texas. We want to thank you for joining us here today. What we're going to be talking about quickly is on April 20th, 2018, there are a string of school walkouts uh, planned in Sage, Texas to protest gun control. There was a national school walkout day on March, uh, on March 14th, and then of course the March for Our Lives on March 24th. The March 14th date in Texas fell on spring break, so many of the students in Texas schools have decided to, uh, to move that date to April 20th uh, and so that for the purpose of commemorating the, uh, the shootings at Columbine years ago. And so what's happening right now are students are organizing demonstrations in school for the purpose of protesting the lack of any meaningful gun control legislation being passed in the United States. Uh, they, have, they have decided that the best way to ensure that their message is heard is by walking out. What we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about some of student rights, some of the student rights that are at play in political demonstrations, not just in walkouts, but in any political demonstration. We're going to talk about what some of the consequences are for walking out. Uh, we're going to discuss the disciplinary hearing process as for, for any consequences you may receive as a result of walking out. And we're going to talk about what an attorney is able to do at that hearing, what your parents are able to do, and how you should prepare for that hearing. So first, let's talk about some of your rights that you have, just, just in general, your rights to political expression in your school. Uh, the First Amendment protects your right to express free expression in school, speech, uh, protest, petition, boycott, everything that you're doing in school that, uh, that constitutes speech, you have certain protections. You have the right to speak either through spoken words or in writing and in the displaying of uh, symbols that may convey a political message. But schools can regulate your right to free expression for two specific reasons. First, your free speech rights may be subject to certain time, place, and manner restrictions. For example, a school can have a rule that you can't circulate a petition during class time. Schools can also make content neutral rules that limit certain types of speech. For example, a school can prohibit all students from wearing any shirts with text on them because that rule would apply uniformly, regardless of what someone's shirt says. A school can restrict any speech that contains lewd or offensive material or uh, causes substantial disruption or promotes drug use or would make someone think that what you're saying is endorsed by your school. That's particularly important in the context of things like uh, speech during school demonstrations or speech in school newspapers. So if your school allows shirts with some messages, it has to allow shirts with any other message. For example, shirts with the message hashtag enough to, uh, to symbolize a person's commitment to, uh, to the walkout or to the principles behind the walkout, a school cannot ban a shirt that says hashtag enough unless it bans all t-shirts that say something on them. They can't discriminate based on the political meaning of the speech or message you're trying to convey. So school officials cannot discipline a student in a way that discriminates against the student's viewpoint unless they have a reasonable belief that the student's communication will cause material and substantial disruption of school operations. Specifically on the uh, point of demonstration rights, you can organize a peaceful and orderly protest before or after school and you can tell people about it, as long as you're not disturbing class by doing so. You should always check your student code of conduct and student handbook for specific rules and guidelines on what you're allowed to do uh, in, terms of, in terms of demonstrating. Your town or city may also have separate requirements on demonstrations if you're going to do this off campus, such as uh, requiring permits to demonstrate, so be sure to check those rules in your particular city before uh, you begin your protest or demonstration off campus. If you are off campus, but at a school sponsored event, such as a sporting event, it is likely that on campus rules will still apply. If your demonstration occurs on campus, what you're doing would be constitutionally protected, whether what you're doing will be constitutionally protected will be determined by whether what you're doing is disruptive. So specifically on the, on the, on the subject of walkouts, 
Walkouts by their very nature are likely to be disruptive to both the school's mission to provide an education and also disruptive to non-participant classmates who may be denied access to educational opportunities as a result of the walkout. It's somewhat unclear whether a walkout occurring that, that's occurring on campus but between class hours or outside of actual instruction time would be disruptive, but it's probably safe to assume that it would be. So yes, you can receive consequences as a result of participating in a walkout because what you're doing is probably disruptive. But you must check your school student code of conduct and student handbook for how your school deals with this particular issue. The student handbook and code of conduct likely won't address walkouts specifically, but may identify some analogous infractions, such as most commonly leaving campus without permission. For example, the consequence for leaving campus without permission or leaving campus to participate in an unauthorized activity may be that the student receives an unexcused absence for that day. The law requires you to attend school and your school has policies about the consequences of missing school without permission. You can be subject to those consequences, even if you are leaving to participate in a protest. But even though you can be subject to those consequences, you can't be punished more harshly or, dis or, or discriminatorily than you would be if you were participating in a non-politically motivated activity. For instance, if you're, leaving, if you're leaving campus to participate in a walkout, the school can't punish you for doing that any differently than if you were leaving campus without permission to go to Fiesta, Texas. They can't discriminate based on the political intent, the political message behind whatever act they're seeking to prohibit. Uh, and again, be sure to check the student code of conduct and, hand, and, and handbook for the, uh, for the defined consequences for leaving school uh, without permission. It may be detention, it may be an unexcused absence, or it may be if it specifically says that you're placed in some kind of uh, ISS and school suspension type. Uh, and so next what we want to talk about is we want to talk about what happens when you're facing consequences. What happens uh, when the school is trying to impose some discipline on you for participating in a walkout or other political demonstration. It is first important to remember uh, that information about disciplinary hearings will vary from district to district. Um, and much of it applies quite differently if you're a student uh, receiving special education in a charter school or in a private school. Your school district must have a student code of conduct, which can usually be found on your school's website or your school district's website. Um, often there is a student handbook or a student bill of rights, and these documents also contain important information for the hearing process. The student code should identify the types of conduct that require mandatory discipline and the types which discipline is discretionary, meaning that it's up to school administrators to decide what the punishment will be. You'll need to cross-reference the conduct the student is accused of committing against the defined consequences in the student code. Whether you have a right to a hearing and how formal the hearing must be is determined by the nature of the consequence applied to the action. There are two sources which you must be familiar with to determine your hearing rights. Chapter 37 of the Texas Education Code and your Student Code. Chapter 37 of the Texas Edu Education Code identifies the scenarios and conduct that trigger students' right to a hearing. Informal hearings are sufficient for most types of disciplinary consequences. Under the federal Supreme Court case Goss v. Lopez, even an informal hearing has the following three elements. Entitled to written or oral notice of the reason for removal, meaning the school has to tell you why you're being punished. Explanation of the basis for removal. Again, the school has to tell you what the reason is that you're being punished and the opportunity to respond. Despite having the right to a hearing, you may not be informed by the school that you can have a hearing. In that case, if you're punished for participating in a school walkout and want to appeal your punishment, you may have to request a hearing. If you do this, do this in writing to your school administration. Uh, there are four types of discipline that may trigger a hearing in school suspensions, out of school suspensions, expulsions, and disciplinary alternative education placement. In school suspension is discretionary. The Texas Education Code authorizes a principal to place a student in in-school suspension or another disciplinary setting when removed from the classroom. Hearings on placements in in-school suspension may be immediate and very informal. Often there will not be enough time to secure an attorney's presence and placement in in-school suspension is rarely long enough for there to be meaningful appeal of suspension. 
Typically, the period in school suspension will be complete before a parent or attorney can intervene, which may render the issue moot. The Rose Student Code may permit additional rights to notice, hearing, and appeals of in-school suspension placement, so it's important to review that document. Out-of-school suspension is also discretionary, and it cannot be longer than three days. A number of schools, uh, schools in Texas have threatened up to three day suspensions for participating in school walkouts. Section 37.009 of the Texas Education Code provides that a hearing must occur no later than the third class day after the day on which a student is removed from class, which means that the suspension period may be complete by the time a hearing even occurs. But the Texas Education Code only sets the minimum requirements for the school district. Check your student code to see whether the school has given students greater due process rights to have a hearing. Many student codes that we've reviewed provide more expensive, expensive hearing rights than the Texas Education Code. Although schools may threaten students with placement in in-school or out-of-school suspension, you must still review the student code to determine whether that is appropriate punishment for the student's behavior in light of the student code and the punishments levied against students previously engaged in similar behavior, but for non-political purposes. The school cannot issue discriminant punishment simply because it disagrees with the political underpinnings motivating the behavior. In-school and out-of-school suspension are most likely to be the harshest penalties imposed on student demonstrators. So students with significant disciplinary history and students who engage in conduct beyond the scope of the demonstration, such as destruction of property or violent behavior, may face more serious consequences. Expulsions and disciplinary alternative education placement require a more formalized hearing and a conference process. These consequences are unlikely to be imposed for school walkouts. However, if the student has had a disciplinary history, um, the school may impose these serious consequences. If you or your child is expelled or placed in disciplinary alternative education placement, it's important that you contact an attorney immediately for assistance. The school's campus behavior coordinator is required to prompt no promptly notice a parent or guardian of a student if they are placed in in-school, out-of-school suspension, expelled, or placed in disciplinary alternative education, which means they have to contact a parent or guardian. Notice must be provided by telephone or in writing by 5 p.m. on the first business day after the day the disciplinary action was taken. If the coordinator can't reach the parent or guardian, they must provide written notice. Formal hearings, the more severe the punishment, requires more due process to ensure fairness. For attorneys representing students, it's important to note the school may have its own attorney at the hearing. You should find out who that attorney is and contact them before the hearing. There are mitigating factors at a disciplinary hearing, including self-defense, the intent of the student, the student's disciplinary hearing, and any physical or learning disabilities that may impact the student's capacity to appreciate the wrongfulness of the conduct. The student Texas, the Texas Education Code does not define in detail your ability to appeal most disciplinary decisions, but the student code or your school a school district typically will define your right to appeal, if any, depending on the consequence imposed. The Texas Education Code provides that if school district policy allows a student to appeal to the Board of Trustees or the Board's designee, a decision of the campus behavior coordinator or appropriate administrator, other than an expulsion for serious offenses, the decision of the Board or the Board's designee is final and may not be appealed. Also, a student or a student's parents or guardian may appeal a decision by a school district board of trustees to place that student in an alternative education program. What can an attorney do at a school disciplinary hearing? Uh, if it's a suspension hearing, we expect these to be very informal. Um, we're not entirely sure what the rules will be, but we assume an attorney will be able to ask questions of the accused and hopefully prevent students from saying anything that might be incriminating, especially incriminating uh, in, a, in a court of law. We think of these uh, student disciplinary hearings much like uh, a parent-teacher conference or a parent-administrator conference. The, the attorney's role at these kind of hearings is going to be very similar to any role a parent could take in advocating on behalf of their student. You need to talk with school administrators ahead of time. Uh, attorneys need to communicate with school administrators ahead of time 
uh, and attorneys for the uh, school districts determine the particular form of the hearing, uh, what the school allows them to do, what the school does not allow them to do, such as confront witnesses, provide your own witnesses, uh, cross-examine witnesses, uh, or if it's simply just a, a, a question and answer format, or just a, a way for you to go in and, and run through your own advocacy, much like in a uh, closing argument. So what should you or your parents do if you think that your political demonstration will result in disciplinary consequences? Texas Appleseed has provided an excellent checklist for parents that can also be utilized by attorneys involved in representing students at these disciplinary hearings. First, gather all relevant information. This means notes from conversations with the student, uh, parents, witnesses, meaning school peers, uh, the teachers, counselors, whoever was involved in the incident or has knowledge of the incident, you're gonna to wanna to speak with them and make sure you have a sense of what they're going to say or what, you, what uh, you anticipate they'll say at the disciplinary hearing. So you can use it on your student's behalf. Consult your school student code of conduct to learn what consequences, including removal from school, your child could face for violating the school's rules for student behavior. Find out if self-defense intent and your student's specific disciplinary history must be considered when your school decides whether to discipline the student. This must be included in your school's student code of conduct. This is particularly important for students accused of engaging in behavior that may be outside the scope of the intended demonstration. For instance, uh, engaging in the destruction of property, being accused of, uh, of, of getting in a fight, violence of any kind. Uh, it's important to understand whether those mitigating factors are going to be applicable. Check the code of conduct for any mention of the school taking a zero tolerance approach to applying discipline to some or all offenses. One thing that we're hearing coming from school administrators is that they are going to take a zero tolerance approach uh, towards students engaged in the walkout. Uh, you, you need to check and see whether or not they engage in zero tolerance uh, approach to, to all students who leave class without permission. Uh, I think it would probably be unlikely that they do. If the student receives special education services, obtain a copy of his or her individualized education plan to see if that adequately addresses uh, the student's learning and behavioral needs. Determine also if failure to follow the individualized education plan is contributing to your child's uh, disciplinary behavior. Meet with an administrator or teacher that was involved to discuss the disciplinary situation, particularly with respect to uh, the form of the proceedings. Uh, remain calm and diplomatic throughout. This is very important for attorneys who are accustomed to uh, a more antagonistic relationship in the courtroom uh, and more zealous representation of their clients. It's important to realize that often we're dealing with, with non-attorneys, we're dealing with lay people in these hearings, and it's important to be, uh, to be courteous and not try to uh, take command or control of the situation. We're there to find uh, the most equitable uh, solution to whatever the, the problem at hand is. Be present and on time for any school conference and for any uh, scheduled disciplinary hearing, and remember to always take notes. This is, and, and not just to take notes, but also to uh, ask for a recording, either audio or video, of any hearing or conference that you're involved in. This can become particularly important if, uh, you're, if you decide that you need to appeal whatever the school's decision is. If you are not satisfied with the disciplinary action taken against your child, consult the Student Code of Conduct for those appellate procedures. Particularly important in light of the amount of school resource officers and licensed peace officers that are on campus, if your child is ticketed or arrested at school and must go to court, parents must be present and on time for any court appearance. Make the juvenile probation officer or court aware of any circumstances that would affect the assigned timetable for paying any fines if they are levied or for completing any community service if such is required. Most importantly, contact an attorney for representation in juvenile court immediately if your child is arrested while participating in the school walkout. Organizations like Texas Rio Grande Legal Aid, Texas Appleseed, the Texas Civil Rights Project, and the ACLU of Texas are paying close attention to the way schools handle student discipline following the April 20th walkouts in Texas. If you believe that your rights have been violated or that you have been punished differently than your peers due to the political meaning of your actions, please contact one of these groups immediately. We'll try to provide you all the information we're able to uh, or refer you to someone that can, depending on the situation. 
Uh, we'll also provide uh, links to materials online that will be available that you'll be able to review for free uh, prior to the demonstration and prior to any disciplinary hearings. And we strongly encourage you to review those and for, to, for the students to review those materials prior to uh, prior to commencing any, any kind of political demonstration. So we want to thank you for watching. Uh, my name is Stephen Gilmore. I'm a criminal defense attorney in San Antonio. My name is Rachel Castagnoli and I'm an attorney in Austin. Thank you again. Bye.